I move the motion relating to the Baha'i faith in the terms in which it appears on the notice paper. I have spoken in this place about the ethnic diversity of my electorate of Stirling several times during my first few months as an MP. Stirling is the most ethnically diverse electorate in the nation, after all, and I am immensely proud to say that the evidence shows it's working well, it's cohesive and it is proof of the benefits of Australia's measured and pragmatic approach to migration. One of the reasons our community is so cohesive is because of the large numbers of volunteers, members of the community dedicating thousands of hours a week to the social fabric of the local sporting clubs, religious groups, schools and other organisations. Community service is the glue that holds us all together, and this is the central teaching of the Baha'i faith. Thanks to a briefing by local Baha'i leaders in Stirling a few weeks ago, I've now become aware of a new, vibrant and crucial part of our local community. The Baha'i teach that the well-being of humankind, its peace and security are unattainable unless and until its unity is firmly established. It's a religion whose pivotal teaching is the oneness of humanity, that we are all equal members of a single human race who share a common home on this planet. Baha'i teachings provide high standards for personal conduct, which taken collectively would contribute to a more united, peaceful and prosperous world. I have discovered, as I researched the religion further, that the Baha'i believe serving the community with excellence in pursuit of this common good is their definition of worship. It's hard for me to imagine a religious belief more compatible to supporting the fabric of a multicultural, democratic and free society. Despite this, the Baha'i have faced decades of persecution. I take comfort in the long history of bipartisan support and solidarity shown by Australians and our parliament in decades gone by to the plight of the Baha'i. And I echo our nation's long-standing support for the Baha'i. In 1983, the Australian government instituted a special humanitarian assistance program for members of the Baha'i faith fleeing religious prosecution. In an article dated 9 May 2013, Nina Markovic of the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Security Division wrote for a background note for the Parliamentary Library. And this stated, the government discussed the issue of the treatment of the Baha'is and supported resolutions on behalf of the Baha'is in the UN General Assembly and in the International Commission of Human Rights in Geneva. Former Australian Ambassador to the United Nations, Gary Quinlan, spoke out on their behalf during his tenure, re referring to discrimination against minority such as the Baha'is. At the end of our meeting in my electorate of Stirling, I asked the local representatives of the Baha'i faith who had taken the time to give me such a clear briefing on who they were and, what I sh and why I should be learning more. I asked what I could do for them. In true, peaceful and diplomatic fashion, they clearly articulated that they do not demand anything but that, in the year of the bicentenary of the birth of their herald, the Barb, it would be a welcome gesture for Australia's parliament to reaffirm our knowledge of their plight and move a motion in solidarity with them. The views, these views are important ingredients in a free, just and noble society, and I express my personal solidar solidarity that their struggles soon come to an end, that they are acknowledged for the gift of service they provide to the community and that the Baha'is may long be a part of our prosperous and harmonious community. I thank the member for Stirling. Uh, is there a seconder for the member for Stirling's motion? I second the motion, Madam Deputy Speaker. And you reserve your right to speak? And I, reserve my I thank the member for McKellar. The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the member for Greenway. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I am delighted and honoured to rise today to acknowledge the Australian Baha'i community 
and in particular extend the appreciation and support of this House to these people of peace, harmony and generosity. I wish to acknowledge the representatives who are tuning in and also those who are here today, including Dr Natalie Mobini, whom I understand is in the gallery. Australia is a successful model of diversity, and those of us here who are lucky to represent diverse electorates have the privilege of experiencing the success of our plurality every day. My electorate of Greenway in northwest Sydney is a home to many different cultures and religions and in communities such as mine, where cultural practices and theological views may differ, the one thing is constant. Respect is afforded to all. I say with very deep sincerity, the Baha'i community personify respect in its every action with their enduring values of inclusivity and acceptance as core tenets of their belief system. It is accurate to say that the teachings of the Baha'i in this regard are intrinsically Australian values. In the promulgation of universal peace, Abdul Baha's beautiful description of the oneness of humanity as, like that of a tree, the nations or peoples are the different limbs and the individual human creatures are the fruits and blossoms, should serve as a reminder of our common ground. As parliamentarians in this place, often considering very contentious issues and in sometimes a most adversarial environment. I can think of no more important lesson than finding common ground, a lesson we should learn from our Baha'i constituents. The Baha'i are also called to public service, a call that everyone in this place is familiar with. The pursuit of a world without prejudice, where women are afforded the same opportunities as men and all people live in the peace graced to them by their innate human dignity are values that we Australians hold dear. All people, irrespective of their ethnic or cultural backgrounds or religious beliefs, should be afforded the right to live and worship peacefully. The persecution of the Baha'i community is a travesty. It is an affront to their human rights. As Australians, we should stand with those who seek to manifest their beliefs peacefully and, as I said, respectfully. To that end, I extend my prayers and support to all people of the Baha'i faith who have or are or know those who are experiencing religious persecution. And I call on those in positions of power to take action to stamp out this discrimination in all its manifestations. This motion, Madam Deputy Speaker, is a good start. On behalf of my community, I would like to extend my best wishes to the Australian Baha'is on the upcoming bicentenary of the Baha'i Faith and the birth of its founder, the Bab, in October this year. From my own experience, having attended the, the birthday celebrations in Silverwater in previous years, I know that this will be an opportunity for spiritual enlightenment and a refocusing on the Baha'i mission. I have always felt the warm welcome of the community at every Baha'i event I have attended. It is a testament to your openness, your generosity, your hospitality. I hope that you enjoy this momentous occasion and take stock of your contribution to the diverse fabric of our Australian society. In conclusion, I would like to personally thank Bazard Mazay, Vincent Takazad, Matt Shahidi, whom I have met with on several occasions and only recently, and the entire Blacktown Baha'i community. Over the years, I have had the privilege of working closely with the Blacktown Baha'is, particularly at my annual Harmony Day morning teas. Again, I say most sincerely, Madam Deputy Speaker, now and again as a Member of Parliament, you meet people who have an impact, an immediate impact for no other reason than simply wanting to share with you their beliefs and their faiths. No particular ask, no particular ask. But as the previous speaker said, just the desire to explain, to be open and to extend hospitality. Thank you for doing that. It is something special and at every meeting I am left spiritually enriched. Your devotion to community, your acceptance of others and positive spirits helps to make Greenway one of the best places to live and it is only fitting that this place shall extend the same warmth and appreciation to you. Congratulations, and may you be blessed on the glorious occasion of your bicentenary. I thank the member for Greenway, and I call the member for McKellar. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise today to second this motion, recognising the Baha'i community 
as a valued part of the Australian society and commend their contribution to social cohesion, unity and community. The Australian Baha'i community is a religious group that is spread throughout the world. The Baha'i community come from all different backgrounds with shared commitments to the teacher, teachers of their prophet Baha'u'llah, who I noticed none of the previous uh, speakers have tried to pronounce, so there we go. Um, the prophet and founder of the Baha'i faith. The Baha'i have fought for over a century to contribute to social cohesion and harmony in Australian society. They endeavour to nurture the spiritual life of children, youth and adults and like to offer service to the community. I'm fortunate to say that my own electorate of McKellar is home to the Baha'i House of Worship. Open, opening in Ingleside in 1961, it is one of only eight in the world and embodies the union of worship and service. The House of Worship represents a spiritual centre for the continent as well as the Sydney community. Standing as a beacon where, inspired by worship, individuals arise to serve their community. It is a place where anyone is welcome, where anyone can pray, reflect and meditate, while hopefully being inspired to selflessly service humanity, to service humanity, such as in the Baha'i way. I have visited the House of Worship a number of times and can attest to not only its physical beauty, nestled away in the beautiful natural environment of Ingleside, high enough that it looks out over the Pacific Ocean, but can also speak to the powerful sense of divinity when inside and around the temple. When, when building the House of Worship, the founder of the Baha'i faith, Bahula, asked that all Baha'i temples be as perfect as is possible in the world of being. The physical appearance of the House of Worship is a potent symbol the outer dome reflecting the inner meaning. The first Baha'i to, to arrive in Australia were John and Clara Dunn, who arrived in Sydney in 1920. From such humble beginnings, the Baha'i community will celebrate its centenary of being in Australia next year. But this year we are celebrating the bicentenary of the birth of the Bab, the herald of the Baha'i faith. The Bab was born in October 1819 in Persia. He was a young merchant when in 1984 he declared as a messenger, as a messenger or manifestation of God. The Bab's writing championed spiritual and moral renewal as well as calling on the improvement of the status of women and the situation of the poor, inspiring thousands of followers to transform their lives and undertake acts of great heroism and sacrifice. The Bab and the Baha'i faith is one of peace, love and respect. Sadly, with his influence growing, the authorities had him executed by firing squad at the age of 31. It is with great regret that I have to raise the ongoing persecution that the Baha'i community have received in some parts of the world. In Iran, the Baha'i the Baha'is can be subjected to raids on their homes and workplaces confiscation of property, arrests and long periods of solitary confinement and interrogation. Baha'is have also been persecuted in Yemen, including imprisonment, raids and arrests. They have also been victims of economic persecution and the denial of basic education. I would encourage all people across the world to learn from the teachings of the Baha'i and respect each other in their own words Concentrate all the thoughts of your heart on love and unity. As I conclude in support of this motion, let me share with you the immortal words of the Baha'u'llah. Let your heart burn with loving kindness for all who may cross your path. As we in this place who act in service of our communities, let us burn with loving kindness as we try to contribute to a better society like the Baha'i community. Thank you, Madam. Yeah. I thank speaking. the member for McKellar and the member for Cohen has the call. Thank you, Speaker. I too rise to support the motion by the member for Stirling and thank him for bringing this motion to the House. If I may, Speaker, I'd like to start by a quote from Baha'u'llah, the founder of, ba of the Baha'i Faith. 
It is not for him to pride himself who loveth his own country, but rather for him who loveth the whole world. The earth is but one country, and mankind its citizens. Speaker, that's one of my favourite quotes, uh, because it speaks to the universal universality of the human race, unfettered by the imagined borders of nationhood and the constructed boundaries of race. Indeed, this quote, to my mind, embodies the Baha'i Faith core principles of inclusivity, of public service and peacefulness, as noted in the member for Stirling's motion. Speaker, my first interaction with the Baha'i Faith came when I was just a young university student, and one of my classmates of Persian origin was a Baha'i. And it was through him that I first learned about the persecution and the suffering of the Baha'i people in what is now known as Iran. Uh, a few years ago, my family were invited to attend the wedding of one of my son's best friends. Uh, at Natasha's wedding to Crawford, we witnessed firsthand and were overwhelmed by the beauty of the ceremony for its spirituality and for its community focus. I'm privileged to have an active Baha'i community in Cowan and have attended several of their functions. And in October this year, the Baha'i community will be celebrating the 200th anniversary of the birth of the Bab. It's an opportunity to learn more about this beautiful faith and of its teachings, but it's also an opportunity to raise awareness of the continued suffering and persecution of Baha'is across the world. Baha'u'llah, meaning the glory of God, endured 40 years of imprisonment and exile for bringing a new revelation to humanity. And even today, the Baha'is are among the most persecuted religious minorities in the world. In Iran, the universities refuse to admit Baha'i students, Baha'i cemeteries have been destroyed, and the country's supreme leader has confiscating has, has confiscated properties from Baha'i families. Baha'is have also been discriminated against and persecuted in Yemen and elsewhere. But despite this, and perhaps as a testimony to the resilience and the beauty of the Baha'i faith, the faith has spread across the globe. And indeed, at a function I attended in Cowan last year, I observed people from all walks of life and all backgrounds coming together in spiritual and communal harmony. There are more than 100,000 local Baha'i communities around the world, and we are all richer for them. Their commitment to peace and harmony stem from the words of Baha'u'llah. He wrote many passages and books about the spiritual and social principles needed to construct a peaceful and just global civilization. And these writings form the scriptures of the Baha'i faith. On the 20th of October, the Baha'i community of Swan will be celebrating the anniversary of their founder at the Vines Resort. I wish them all the best with their function and would like to make special mention of Rochelle and the Swan Baha'i community and Margaret and Huda of the Wanneroo Baha'i community. I'd also like to acknowledge Dr Natalie Mobina and Shapali of the Australian Baha'i community, whom I've had the pleasure of meeting on several occasions and who are present in the gallery here this morning. Speak up for those of us who are searching for guidance in this place. There are many words of Baha'u'llah which I think would serve us well. And in searching myself for guidance in the words of Baha'u'llah, I found these wonderful words of wisdom which I'd like to share in the final, um, a, a, as a closing here. Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity, ad, in adversity. Be worthy of the trust of thy neighbour and look upon him with a bright and friendly face. Be a treasure to the poor, an admonisher to the rich, an answer to the cry of the needy, a preserver of the sanctity of thy pledge. Be fair in thy judgment and guarded in thy speech. Be unjust to no man and show all meekness to all men. Be as a lamp unto them and walk in, that walk in darkness, a joy to the sorrowful, a sea for the thirsty, a haven for the distressed, an upholder and defender of the victims of oppression. Thank the member for Cowan. I call the member for Barawa. <laughs> thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I'd like to thank the member for Stirling for this motion to celebrate the bicentenary of the birth of the Baha'i Faith 
and to welcome wonderful members of the Baha'i community here to the House of Representatives today. There are more than five million Baha'i worldwide found in almost every country. The bicentenary we're celebrating today marks 200 years since the Bab was born. The Bab was the prophet who came before Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith. When I last visited Israel, I had the privilege of having a tour led by Australian Baha'i of the beautiful Baha'i gardens in Haifa, where the Bab is buried. The first Baha'i came to Australia in 1920, which means next year we'll actually be celebrating the centenary of the Baha'i in Australia. I have two Baha'i spiritual assemblies in my own electorate, one in Castle Hill and one at Hornsby. The Baha'i faith uses the texts and traditions of other religions, forming a tradition which combines in many respects the best elements of all, emphasising the unity and, and equality of all people. Through their acts of community service, the Baha'i community makes an important contribution to Australian society, with a focus on building a cohesive community that ensures all belong. Baha'i seek to serve their community through cooperation and support to achieve good social outcomes. Baha'i have a particular focus on young people, teaching virtues of love, truthfulness and justice, seeking to guide young people on how to live a fruitful and productive life. Despite being a people who, uh, of faith who celebrate, promote and preserve peace, community service and inclusion, sadly the Baha'i community are a highly persecuted people, especially in Yemen and Iran. The Baha'i community formed the largest non-Muslim faith group in Iran, yet over the last 40 years they have been subjected to systematic state-sponsored persecution. Government-led attacks have been particularly severe since 2005. Raids are carried out on the workplaces and homes of the Baha'i. Their property is confiscated, they are arrested, they are subjected to long periods of solitary confinement and interrogation. Since 2005, more than 1,234 Baha'i have been arrested in different parts of Iran, with at least 95 arrested just last year. Beyond facing the constant threat of arrest, the Baha'i people face financial persecution, impingement on their right to an education, attacks on their burial grounds and constant persecution provoked by anti-Baha'i material disseminated by the Iranian regime. Baha'i are not allowed to hold government jobs and private sector employers are often pressured to fire their Baha'i employees. Their business licences are often refused and their businesses are shut down. And This has been the fate of more than 490 Baha'i-owned shops since 2016. Baha'i students are constantly prevented from undertaking a university education, despite the fact that many of them pass the national university entrance exams. And Even if they get into university, the government requires expulsion as soon as they are identified as Baha'i. Attacks have prevailed on Baha'i cemeteries in various parts of Iran, and in some cities Baha'i people are not allowed to perform burials or are ordered to bury their loved ones in cities far from their homes. Some in the West regard President Rouhani as a reformer, but nothing could be further from the, from the truth. Under Rouhani, the persecution of the Baha'i has ramped up a notch. Since President Rouhani was elected in 2013, more than 36,000 anti-Baha'i articles, videos, television programs, web pages have appeared in government-controlled or government-sponsored media. The propaganda often scapegoats Baha'i as the reason for Iran's economic and political problems or suggests that the Baha'i community stands in opposition to the government or to Islam. This ongoing persecution unfortunately has spread to Yemen. One Baha'i man, Hamid Kamal bin Hajara, was recently sentenced to death by public execution after facing severe mistreatment since his arrest in 2013. In 2016, 60 men, women and children were arrested while participating in an educational conference. Their homes were raided to seize phones, passports and other documents. In 2017, the authorities called for the arrest of 25 Baha'i. Six are still imprisoned and many others have been forced to go into hiding. The Houthi insurgency also incites hatred against the Baha'i by labelling them as satanic and calling for their followers to wage war against them. Much of this persecution is being directed by the authorities in Iran. This is an appalling assault on the Baha'i community and their humanity. So today in the House of Representatives and the Parliament of the Commonwealth of Australia, in the strongest possible terms, I condemn the Iranian and Yemeni <coughs> government's treatment of the Baha'i community and their complete disregard for their basic human rights. Mm -hmm. I call on an end to the systemic persecution of the Baha'i in Iran and Yemen, and I call for the immediate release of Baha'i prisoners imprisoned for their religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. At a time which should be a cause for celebrating a peace-loving community, it is so sad that we have to reflect on the persecution of Baha'i around the world. Thank the member for Barara, and I call the member for Newcastle. 
Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. And I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to contribute to this motion, recognising the people of the Baha'i faith and acknowledging their contributions to our society. Thank you to all members who have spoken on this uh, motion. And I'd also like to recognise the people of Baha'i faith present in the gallery today. I'd also like to congratulate the Baha'i followers on the upcoming uh, historic bicentenary of the birth of the founder, the Bab, next month. The Baha'i faith is one of peace and inclusion. It recognises the value and worth of all religions. It sees the inherent unity of all people, and it actively rejects the damaging scourge of racism, prejudice and discrimination. At a time when we are seeing communities and countries across the globe splinter and fragment through hatred and division, it is clear that there is much to take from this belief system. The people in the Baha'i faith come from all walks of life and represent many sectors in our community. In my electorate of Newcastle, I am fortunate to have a deeply committed local Baha'i community. It is a vibrant and welcoming group of wonderful people. I'd particularly like to acknowledge Tom Jones, the volunteer Baha'i chaplain at the University of Newcastle, who has long led the spiritual assembly of the Baha'is in Newcastle. Tom has been an incredible advocate for his local community, but also for the plight of Baha'i followers facing prejudice and persecution overseas. I am glad that Australia is a place where all people can practice their faith freely. Regretfully, this isn't the case everywhere. While Australia is currently focused on ensuring that people of all faiths are able to practice their beliefs in Australia without discrimination, it is timely for this House to recall that there are still many places in the world where people are imprisoned for their beliefs. Indeed, the Baha'i people are subjected to appalling persecution in a number of countries. Last time I rose to speak uh, about the Baha'i in this place, I reflected on the appalling treatment of Iran's 300,000 Baha'i followers. I spoke to the fact that the Iranian Baha'is are being restricted and repressed in all areas of their life. Hundreds have been detained or even arrested for their faith. This includes every single one of the seven leaders of the National Baha'i Leadership Group who have been imprisoned on bogus, vague and confected charges like disturbing national security or spreading propaganda against the regime. Many ordinary citizens have found themselves excluded from education and business, denied government support that should be their right as citizens, or had their property seized. Others have found themselves subjected to brutal beatings or torture. And virtually all have experienced some form of denial of their basic civil liberties, just because of the faith they follow. Since I last spoke, there have been some more concerning developments, but also some glimmers of hope. According to the reports, in 2018 alone, authorities arbitrarily detained almost 100 members of the Baha'i faith. In November last year, the United Nations General Assembly called on Iran to put an end to these ongoing human rights violations. However, in January this year, a provincial court of appeal acquitted a Baha'i citizen who had been sentenced to seven months in prison for propaganda against the state, finding that proselytising for a faith can't be seen as propaganda against the state. Since then, there have been a few reports of uh, courts acquitting Baha'i people who have been sentenced to prison on similar charges. Some have said these may be the first cases of Iranian courts finding that proselytising for the Baha'i faith is not a crime. This is a move in the right direction, which will hopefully set a positive precedent for the future. But we mustn't become complacent. Australia must continue to robustly defend the rights of the Baha'i, who face diabolical persecution across the world. We, as part of an international community, can't sit back and let this happen unchallenged. We cannot be silent. It is important that Australia keeps raising this issue through international forums and whatever influence we have to end this terrible inhumanity and uphold well-established international human rights protections. I thank the member for Newcastle. The time allotted for this debate has expired. The debate is adjourned and the resumption of the debate will be made in order of the day for the next sitting.